Hey, we're back again, and this time we'll be focusing in on one of the more overlooked aspects of a compressor, and that is the compressor's knee. The knee plays a huge role on how the compressor behaves, and is just as influential on the sound as the threshold and ratio. Now before we look at the knee, let's quickly recap what we've learned about the threshold and ratio. Back on our chart, you'll recall that a compressor with a 1 to 1 ratio is a linear gain amplifier, so for every 1 decibel of input, the compressor puts out 1 decibel. When we plot these points, we end up with a perfectly diagonal line up our graph. A compressor that has a 2 to 1 ratio means that for every 2 decibels of input, we have 1 decibel of output. So we'll come over 2 and come up 1. When we plot these points, we end up with a curve that looks different and a compressor with a 4 to 1 ratio, we can come over 4 and come up 1. You'll also remember that the compressor doesn't actually start compressing until our incoming signal exceeds the level of our threshold, and that's the point at which gain reduction starts. So let's say that our threshold is occurring right at this point. What we end up with is an audio signal with unity gain all the way up until that point where our threshold is. When gain reduction kicks in, our curve then changes direction and gives us something that looks like this. This area right here is called the knee, and the knee occurs at the spot where the threshold is set. So all of our uncompressed signal remains below the point of our threshold, and our compressed signal is above the point of our threshold. The shape of the knee that we're currently looking at is known as a hard knee, because the transition point goes from unity gain immediately to our compressed signal. Many compressors, however, either have a variable knee setting or a knee that's slightly softer in shape, and it will look similar to this. This knee shape is known as a soft knee. So this area here shows that our signal is actually getting a little bit compressed below the area of our threshold and isn't actually reaching its full ratio until well above our threshold. So the measurement of our knee is also in decibels, but it's called the span. And the span goes from the beginning of the knee all the way to the end of the knee. So if these blocks represented one decibel units, we would be looking at a span of four decibels. So some compressors have softer knees with a greater span, and some compressors have harder knees with a lesser span. Softer knees tend to distort less, but also they behave much different because our gain reduction kicks in before the threshold, and we don't reach full compression until well above the threshold. And this is where you were seeing some of those metering inconsistencies in a few of the previous videos. Every compressor is different, and analog compressors especially don't have that accuracy in the knee that digital compressors do. So you're going to see a lot more fluctuation on that end. So again, much of the metering that you're going to be seeing from compressors, you'll be using mainly as a guide or a visual aid to assist you with compression. Now let's take a listen to a few audio examples and see some of the compressors that have variable knees and see how they affect the sound. Okay, so in this first example, we're going to take a look at our Chandler Limited 500 series Little Devil compressor. This compressor has two different operating modes and each one of them has a different knee. We have the germanium mode, which is a much harder knee setting, and the zener mode, which is a much softer knee. Now we're going to be using this on bass guitar, but I really want you to listen to the behavior of the compressor when we switch between a hard knee and a soft knee. The hard knee has a much more aggressive effect on the transients of our audio signal. The soft knee, however, gives us a much more natural sounding compression. Let's take a listen. So you could really hear in the Zener mode where it gave our transients a little bit of room to breathe and it gave us a slightly more dynamic attack and a more natural sounding compression. In the Germanium mode, we were really able to clamp down on those transients and hear more of the sustain in the release. Let's see what the effect is of the variable knee on our API 527 on the kick drum. We also could hear a similar effect on that kick drum. And you'll also see on this particular Personas channel strip 
that we have the ability of toggling the compressor section between a hard knee and a soft knee setting here. Now here we have another good example of a compressor with a variable knee. And I just wanted to use this one to point out that you can more easily hear the difference between the knee when our gain reduction is riding the transients. So if you're really crushing your audio signal and you have a very low threshold, you may not hear as much of a difference with the knee as you will with a higher threshold. So let's start with our threshold at zero, and then we'll start lowering it with a hard knee setting until we start activating our gain reduction. So you can really hear the compressor start to catch those transients. Let's toggle the knee setting and listen to how the transients are affected. So the main thing to get from this video is that every compressor has a different knee. Some have variable knees, and other compressors have a knee that's not adjustable. And this is another one of the features of compressors that will really determine what compressor you use for different instruments. Sometimes when you're going for a more aggressive sound, you'll choose a compressor with a harder knee. And when you want more subtle and gradual compression effects, you might use a compressor that has a softer knee. Feel free to refer to the compressor cheat sheet for more tips on what kind of knee you should use on certain instruments. In the next video, we're going to discover the side chain of the compressor and see all different kinds of cool ways that we can use audio from another source to manipulate the sound of a compressor. Stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.